Hey everybody, this is Puka bringing you the top four of the Davie, Florida City Championships. Now this was the first tournament from the Florida Marathon and we have a pretty big matchup here in the top four. On the left, we have Florida native Aaron Curry, a multiple time world competitor, one of the top players in the world. And on the right, you may have heard of him, uh, two time world champion and our own Top Cut Invitational champion, Jason Klusinski. And this matchup is a little interesting because we probably have the two most hated decks in the format facing off. Uh, Aaron on the left is playing his Zekrom Tornadus Pachirisu Shaman deck, ZTPS, uh, or ZPST, however you want to rearrange those initials. And Jason probably playing the most hated deck in the world, Durant. Uh, now, it's just sort of an interesting matchup. Most people would assume that the Zekrom deck is indeed favored, but there are a lot of things that can go wrong where the Durant deck can pull out a victory. So uh, we'll have to see exactly what happens. If the Zekrom deck does indeed start with Zekrom, then usually things go well, but uh, if they start with Tornadus, Pantrisu, or Shaman, uh, things can get a little rough just due to cards like Lost Remover and Pokemon Catcher and Crushing Hammer. Uh, those are all big cards that are going to play a big role in the matchup. Also, Eevee Light and Special Metal on the Durant. Now, Jason's just uh, contemplating whether or not to bench a second Pokemon, and he decides not to. He decides to take the risk. I believe the other Pokemon in his hand was a Cabalion, which uh, would probably not be a good thing for him to have in play because it can just get catchered out, and it's just going to waste time. So, uh, we do have a lone Durant versus a Tornadus. We could see a first turn win, but... I don't see any of those cards helping Aaron out. Uh, he probably needed Patrisu and Shaman off of that Sage's training in order to pull off the first turn victory. And yeah, he had plenty of energy, just uh, did not have the Patrisu or the Shaman. So just going to attach an energy and pass. Now, you'll notice he decided to attach the Lightning instead of the Double Colorless. Why would he do that? Uh, if he attaches the Double Colorless, Jason can simply play a Lost Remover. And that Double Colorless is just gone from play and Aaron is back down to zero energy in play so uh, even though lightning can be removed by crushing hammer that is a flip so you might as well play the one that does not get removed instantly uh, that seems like the better route here so Jason does play a pokey gear he uh, starts with his favorite uh, Pokemon which is Durant um, this allows him to get a turn one devour which um, is the whole point of his deck so he does have that nice first turn collector and he starts with the Durant. We'll see if any Durants are prized. Um, he's going to aim to just get all four Durants into play. And then use Devour over and over and over. Uh, Durant, attack, uh, Devour. Discards a card from the top of your opponent's deck for each Durant you have in play. So if you have four Durants in play, you discard four cards off the top of your opponent's deck every turn. And uh, eventually you just try to deck them out before they take all six prizes. And the strategy is just to keep your Durants alive as long as possible. Try to steal turns with cards like Crushing Hammer and Lost Remover and Pokemon Catcher so that you can keep devouring and not allow your opponent to take all six prizes. So this is pretty much a perfect start for Jason. Uh, the only way it could have been better is if he went first. But uh, he is going second. He gets his Collector. He's just going to check through his deck, see what's prized, and he's going to take a good long look because he wants to know exactly what's prized. Uh, one of the things about Durant is that you don't actually take any of your prizes over the course of the game, so it's important to know what actually is prized so you know what you have and what you don't have. And uh, in some cases, you can actually use Rotom's Mischievous Trick to get crucial cards out of the prizes if need be. So Jason just taking a good long look at his deck. And uh, gonna make sure nothing crucial is prized, and if it is, he's gonna have to go for the Rotom. So right here we do see a victory medal. We got a Tails and another Tails, so uh, not gonna work there. Yes, you may be surprised that victory medal is still legal, <laughs> uh, but uh, if you flip one heads, you draw a card. If you flip two heads, you get to search your deck for any card, and if you get two Tails, it does nothing. So. 75% uh, chance that it does something, but 
25% chance that you just do nothing, and that's what happened there. So we did see a Devour. Um, nothing too crucial, but we did see a Shaman get discarded off of the first Devour. So that could be a big deal. Shaman Celebration win is actually one of the ways you can avoid Pokemon Catcher from hurting you. Um, the bad part about Tornadus is that even though it does 80, it can knock out a Durant in one hit. Uh, it's actually probably your worst Pokemon, well besides the Pachirisu and Shaman, but it's much worse than attacking with Zekrom. Now it does have Hurricane, 80 for 3, however, uh, once an Eviolite goes on Durant, then Hurricane does not knock out a Durant in one hit, and also, once you start benching Pokemon, you actually have to move energy off of your active Tornadus onto your bench stuff, so, um... Once Jason starts playing cards like Lost Remover and Crushing Hammer, this is going to be a big deal because he can just remove the energy that's on the Tornadus, and then there's going to be one on a benched Pokemon because he has to move on with Hurricane if he has a benched Pokemon. And Tornadus just won't be able to attack a couple turns. And eventually Devour is probably going to get him. So Tornadus is actually quite a bad starter in this matchup. You would really prefer to start with Zekrom because... He doesn't move energy, a Bolt Strike is always going to knock out a Durant, unless there's something crazy like Defenders on him too. Um, but Tornadus is actually just not reliable, and we do see that Double Colorless on the Tornadus, which is a very big liability because um, whenever you have a special energy on the field, Durant's going to play a Lost Remover, and it's going to get rid of it immediately, and you're going to be running out of energy pretty quickly. So this will be a big turn. I know we'll see Jason, he played a Twins, so I know he'll get a Lost Remover at the very least. And there's a Crushing Hammer. So, oof, that's going to be a huge deal. Crushing Hammer removes the Lightning, and uh, Lost Remover removes the Double Colorless from play. And Aaron, he looked good. He had a uh, Double Colorless and a Lightning on the Tornadus. He knocked out a Durant on the second turn, and now he's got no energy in play, so that is... Uh, a pretty big deal, and this is going to be the turn where he's going to have to bench stuff, I think. Those crushing hammers and those lost removers are a pain to deal with, but um, it's just what Durant does. People always wonder how Durant can actually win games, and this is kind of a big reason why. It just buys time over and over and over. Any time that you don't knock out a Durant, any turn that you just let your opponent devour a second time without... Uh, getting a knockout on a Durant, that's a really big deal. That allows him to uh, to devour four more cards off of your deck, and eventually that stuff adds up. Um, four cards every turn, that's a big deal. Eventually they start discarding important cards from your deck. Uh, there's no way to avoid that. And, um, I mean, Aaron's just got to find a way to keep energy in play, which is uh, going to be tough. He's basically just got to pray that Jason hits Tails, or runs out of stuff in his hand, and I don't know if he has any other way to deal with it. So, we did see him put down a Pachirisu with two Lightning using self generation, and Shaman moves it up to the Tornadus, and he puts another double colorless on the Tornadus, and we do get another knockout on a Durant. Aaron has taken two prizes in three turns, but uh, I think he's probably going to run out of steam pretty soon, depending on what's in Jason's hand. Um, you know, another Lost Remover would be a pain in the butt. Um, crushing Hammer is always going to be a pain. And what's going to happen is, if Jason keeps removing energy off of Aaron's Pokemon, uh, eventually Aaron's going to have to play a Supporter to refill his hand and get enough energy into play to start attacking again. And most the ZPST decks actually don't play Supporters that like don't draw directly from your deck. They play cards like Professor Juniper and Sage's Training. And these cards are very bad when you're facing Durant. Sage's Training, you look at the top five, you take two, discard three. So that's effectively removing five cards from your deck. And Professor Juniper, well you're just drawing seven cards. So that's taking seven cards out of your deck. And that honestly just helps the Durant player uh, deck you out faster. It's just an unfortunate part of the matchup. Um, that's just the way that most Zekrom decks are built. Not really a whole lot you can do about it. Uh, but that is going to be what's going to happen if 
Jason keeps removing energy off of uh, Aaron's Pokemon. So we do see another Twins from Jason. He did get that, get that off the Pokegear, I believe. We see a Catcher to bring up Shaman. Uh, this is just going to buy some time. Force the Shaman uh, to pay the retreat cost in order to send up Tornadus again. And this is the problem when you have to start benching Pokemon and then there's another Lost Remover. And all of a sudden, Aaron is down to just two energy in play. And we do see another Devour. And now Aaron is in a very tough spot. Uh, what does he want to do? In order to attack, he's going to have to retreat, which takes one energy. Uh, he has to attach an energy to Shaman to retreat, unless he has a switch or something like that. Uh, and then, even if he does retreat, then he doesn't have a way to actually attack with Tornadus. Uh, because there's only one energy on the Tornadus. Meaning, he won't be able to attack this turn. And then he's going to have to retreat. And then attach a double colorless the next turn in Hurricane. And then if he just gets Lost Removed again, then he's just going to have no energy. And I think you can see where this is going to go. Uh, even though he started off fairly quickly, he got a turn 2 knockout on a Durant. It all went downhill. Um... Anytime you have to use special energy against Durant, it's not a good thing because Lost Remover is such a strong card, it removes your special energy directly from play. Um, so, this is a tricky situation that Aaron has to try to figure out how to get through. Um, he could attach the Double Colorless to Tornadus and pass. That is extremely dangerous though because a Lost Remover just simply removes that from the game. Um, so, he's going to make the right move here and just attach to Shaman. And then wait a turn, on the next turn he can retreat and attach to Double Colas and Hurricane. Uh, now, if he retreated this turn and just sent up Tornadus, then Jason could just play another catcher, bring Shaman back out, and Aaron has gotten nowhere. Um, he is still a turn away from attacking, so he did the correct move here, uh, just leaving the energy on the Shaman. You are vulnerable, vulnerable to Crushing Hammer, but there's not really anything you can do about that. This is just kind of the spot you get into against Durant. And this is why the deck is so, so annoying. And this is honestly how it starts to win games. Durant on its own, probably not a very strong deck. But when you factor in cards like Crushing Hammer and Lost Remover and Pokemon Catcher, these extremely disruptive cards, then yes, Durant does have enough time to actually devour your opponent's whole deck. And uh, since you never really take prizes, you can take advantage of cards like Twins and search your deck for these cards. And it makes Durant into a very consistent deck where you just kind of back your opponent into a corner and say, hey, go ahead, you can try to take six prizes, but I think eventually I'm going to buy enough time to devour your deck. And we can start to see Aaron's deck is getting pretty low, and pretty soon he's probably going to have to play a supporter. He does have that Juniper in his hand, and that's not what he wants to do, but that's probably what he's going to have to do. So... Here we go, he's retreating the Shaman this turn, sending up Tornadus once again, but uh, he does have to use that Double Colorless, which is a shame, and we're going to see a plus power, because now there's an Eviolite on that Durant, and probably a Hurricane for a knockout, and Aaron's going to be at three prizes, but how is he going to take his last three in time? Uh, you can see his deck is getting smaller, he'll probably have to use that Juniper next turn, Unless he uh, gets a nice combination of cards off his prizes. And also, uh, Jason did discard Aaron's Shaman early on in the game. His second one, I believe. Uh, so, Aaron probably does not have a second Shaman. So he won't be able to move the energy up to his Tornadus, which is going to be a problem. Um, basically, a lost remover here is going to be the end for Aaron. I don't know if he can recover from another Lost Remover. Uh, so Jason just needs a Junk Arm in his hand. And he'll be able to Junk Arm for the Lost Remover. And that will be Aaron's fourth Double Call List. Because one was Devoured. Two are in the Lost Zone. One are, one is on his Active. Uh, so once all those Double Call Lists are gone. There's not really going to be a way for him to uh, Devour anymore. Or to Hurricane anymore. At least not in time. And we are just seeing a methodical game from the Durant. And uh, Jason's doing everything correctly. Uh, he's playing the matchup the way it should be played. He's just 
slowly, 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 but surely devouring Aaron's deck away. Uh, we do see there are a decent number of cards left in Aaron's deck, but I don't know if there's going to be enough for him to actually take those final three prizes. Uh, but it's going to depend on whether or not Jason gets that junk arm for Lost Remover, and we can see it in his hand here. Uh, he will be able to play it. We're just going to have to see whether or not, uh, what, actually, which card he's going to discard. So, uh, the N is kind of a big deal, because it gives Jason a full hand of six cards, but, um, on Aaron's side, it brings him down to three cards, which means either he's not going to have anything, or he's going to have to play a supporter, um, in order to draw cards and get some energy. Either thing is not good for him. Uh, if he didn't have energy, he wouldn't be able to attack, and then Jason would just keep using Devour and win the game eventually. But if he has to use, say, uh, that Juniper or that Sage, he's taking a bunch of cards out of his deck, and um, that's just going to help Jason devour the deck faster. And eventually Aaron probably will deck out. So uh, even though you might think the Zekrom Tornadus deck is favored in this matchup, uh, we do see Jason junk out for the Lost Remover, and Aaron will scoop up his cards and move on to game two. So even though most people would assume that the Zekrom deck is favored, you can see there that things don't always go the way you think. Um, that's not how you plan it out on paper. And we do see Jason Klusinski's Durant take the first game. If you're Aaron, you're probably going to be a little frustrated, thinking, what can I do about that? Uh, but that was game one. We will move on to game two for more Durant versus Zekrom action. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.